guys, how you doing? Mason Zero ASMR here with another video. You guys seem to enjoy my Narset uh, Commander deck, so I'll show you my other Commander deck, which is Dagatar the Adamant. So, Dagatar the Adamant is three and a white for a legendary creature, Human Warrior. He is a zero zero, but he enters the battlefield with four plus one plus one counters on it on him, and he also has vigilance. You can pay one and two hybrid uh, green black for total three mana to move a plus one plus one counter from target creature onto a second target creature. So it's useful for shuffling counters around. It can also be good for stealing counters from your opponent's creatures if they have any. So he's not the most disruptive or annoying commander, but he's still fun, and because he has green and black in his cost, we get to play Opsong Colors. So this deck is a plus one, plus one counters uh, matters deck with a small life gain sub-theme that is slowly getting a little bit bigger, uh, but it's still pretty small. So it's mostly plus one, plus one counters. It's relatively creature heavy. Uh, lots of Ops on guards from Cons of Turkey or Fate Forged. So we'll start the land. We have one, two, three planes. One, two, three, four, five, six forests, and just one swamp. So those are all of our basics. We don't have very many. Basics. Um, now we'll skip all of our colors. So first we have Sandstep Citadel. Foil. Promo. Oh yeah. Dagatar himself is foil, but he's curling quite a bit, so I'm going to have to get a new one. Luckily, his foil is like 99 cents. So, we have the Sandstep Citadel. Citadel. He uh, opts on Wedge Land, so taps for white, black, or green. <coughs> we have Stirring taps for green or white, and you can pay to have it become a 3-4 green and white elemental with reach. Uh, so, just some additional value out of a land. We have two Jacques lands. We have Goblet Shrine for white and black, and Temple Garden for green and white. I don't have the uh, green and black one. Same with the temples, actually. I have Temple of Silence for Bounce Lands, Orzhov Basilica, Golgari Rock Farm, and Celestia Sanctuary. And then the three Guild Gates, Orzhov Guild Gate, Golgari Guild Gate, and Celestia Guild Gate. We also have the uh, Khan's Fate um, Dual Lands. So Scoured Barrens, Jungle Hollow, Blossoming Sand. Great Belt Refuge is, does the same thing as Blossoming Sands. Comes in tapped, gain a life, taps for green and white. Uh, tainted Field and Tainted Wood. Uh, you can only tap them for colors if they control a swamp, or if you control a swamp. Uh, but they tap for colorless otherwise. And I guess it is kind of hard because we only have one basic swamp, and then the Godless Shrine has uh, sources of swamp. So, you know, we'll see what happens there. So next, we have Canopy Vista. Uh, it's the battle land, green-white. Comes in tapped unless you control two or more basic lands. It's a forest plains. Sun Petal Grove enters the battlefield tapped unless you control a forest or a plains. Taps for green or white. Lanoir Reborn is the perfect land for this deck. It has Graft 1, so it comes in with a plus 1, plus 1 counter on it, and when a creature enters the battlefield, we can move it. So it's pretty cool. Works nicely with our deck. Kabira Crossroads enters tapped, taps for white, and we gain 2 life when it comes in. Remote Farm has 2 depletion counters on it, and comes in tapped. Tap it, remove a counter, and add two white mana. And then when it has no 
patient counters, we sacrifice it, so it's just some a quick mana boost. Sometimes I don't draw enough land early enough, so that'll be a nice little boost to get us started. Grasslands is the poor man's fetch land. It comes in tapped, and then we can tap it to search for a plains or a forest. Nantuko Monastery taps for colorless, and then if we have threshold, we can pay a green and a white to turn into a 4-4 creature with first strike. So another man land. It's Vogthos the Restless Tomb. Taps for colorless. And we can turn it into a plant zombie whose power and toughness are equal to the number of creatures in uh, our graveyard. Which, we have a lot of creatures in this deck, so it's not unreasonable that it can be large. Growth the Guardian. Taps for colorless. And we can turn it into... Or we can sacrifice it and turn it into an 8-8 white elemental token with vigilance. So that's pretty cool. And now onto the artifacts, which are mostly mana rocks. We have Obson Banner, uh, taps for any of the three Obson colors, and then we can pay one of each to sack it and draw a card. Dromoka Monument adds green or white, and we can turn it into a 4-4 green and white dragon with flying. We have the Orzhov Signet, Kari Signet, and Celestia Signet, as well as the Orzhov Gluestone, Golgari Gluestone, and Celestia Gluestone. Then we have a Shrine of Boundless Growth. It's an artifact. Whenever we or turn our upkeep and we cast a green spell, we put a counter on it, and we can sacrifice it and add one colorless for each charge counter. Now on to the many creatures. Now that the mana sources are out of the way. First we have Mar'ek Nightblade, it has Outlast, and it's a 2-3, and it gives all of our creatures with counters on them Death Touch. And I have most of the cards that give things with plus one plus one counters, uh, the, the keyword abilities, like this one. Tuska Guard Captain, a 2-3 with Outlast, that gives cards with counters on them Trample. Corpse Jack Menace is a 4-4 four, for four, 4. If one or more count, plus 1 plus 1 counters will be placed on a creature, uh, you control, put twice that many on instead. So that just grows a lot of our things out of control. Ops on Battle Priest is a 3-2. Gives our creatures the counters on the lifelink. Also has Outlast. Enduring Scale Lord is a 4-4 four, four, Flying Dragon for 6. But when one or more counters are placed on a creature that we control. We can put a counter on this dragon. Skew Mob is an awesome one drop. Even for a commander, I think. Gets out of control. At the beginning of your upkeep, you control five or more lands. You put four plus one plus one counters on it. So you play it, it's a 1-1. One, one. Next turn, if you have five lands, it's a 5-5. Five, five. Next turn, if it's not taken care of, it's a 9-9. Nine, nine. It just keeps growing. I think I had it at like 20-something one time. Uh, Inoch Bondkin is a 2-1 with Outlast. Gives our creatures with counters on them first strike. Patron of the Valiant is a 4-4 four, four, Flying Angel for 5. When it enters the battlefield, you put a plus one plus one counter on each creature that already has a counter on it, which is going to be most of our creatures. And it's also it's also decently costed. 4-4 four, four flying for 5 is pretty decent. Renegade Crisis. It's a 3-2 with Evolve. So whenever something enters the battlefield that has more power or toughness uh, that we control than this, we put a counter on it. And when it does that, we put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on each other creature that we control with a plus 1 plus 1 counter on it. So as you can see, the goals are get counters on things, put more counters on them. Hydra Broodmaster, it's a 7-7. Seven, seven. Uh, we can monstrosity it for X, X, and green. And we put X plus 1 plus 1 counters on it. And uh, we also put X, 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 green Hydra tokens on the battlefield. So not only do we get counters, but we also get tokens that we can put counters on. Avatar of the Resolute is a 3-2 for 2 green, which is already good, but it has reach and trample, and it enters the battlefield with a counter on it for each other creature that we control that has a counter on it. So if it comes in early, it's not great. If it comes in later, it can be amazing. Genesis.
is this Hydra. Cost X and two green. So it comes in with X plus one plus one counters on it. Otherwise it's a zero zero. And it will reveal the top X cards of your library when you cast it. And we may put a permanent with mana cost X or less from among them onto the battlefield. So that's just pure value. <laughs> like that's that's awesome. I love this card. And it's the foil promo. Dramoka the Eternal is a 5-5 five, five for 5 dragon um, with flying. And whenever a dragon we control attacks, of which we have this one, and then the... Oh, we have two more, I think. Uh, we bolster two, so we take our card with the least toughness and put two counters on it. Undergrowth Champion is a 2-2 two, two for 3 elemental. If damage will be dealt to it when it has counters on it, we prevent that damage and remove one of the counters. And when a land enters the battlefield under our control, we put a counter on it. So it keeps itself alive against combat pretty well. Ops on Falconer saw some standard play. A few of these cards saw standard play when Art and Scales was a thing. Which, by the way, is another card I need for this deck. I do not have Art and Scales yet. But I'll get it soon, probably. It's a 2-3 with Outlast, and our creatures with the counters on them have flying, which is crazy when you have all these giant flyers going around. With First Strike Trample, Lifelink, all that stuff. Elite Scale Guard is a 2-3. When it enters the battlefield, we bolster 2. And whenever a creature we control with a plus 1, plus 1 counter on it attacks, we tap a creature the defending player controls. <coughs> Dragon Scale General, the one from the intro deck. It's a 2 3 for 4, but at the beginning of your end step, bolster X or X number of tapped creatures you control. So it pays to attack with things, but even if you only attack with one, um, you, can, uh, you can bolster. It's also cool because if you tap your creatures for mana or like anything else, then that counts as it being tapped, so you get to bolster. Here's our last dragon, I believe, Sunscorch Regent. Um, a little bit into the life gain aspect of the deck. It's a 4-3 flyer for 5. <coughs> Whenever an opponent casts a spell, we put a plus 1, plus 1 counter on Sunscorch Regent and gain a life. So, when our opponents cast spells, we get Wild Beastmaster is a 1-1 one, one for 3, but we want to get a bunch of counters on it, because when it attacks, each other creature we control gets plus X, plus X until end of turn, where X is Wild Beastmaster's power. So we want to get it big, make all of our other things even bigger. High Sentinels of Erishin is a 3-4 flyer for 4. It gets plus 1, plus 1 for each creature we control with a plus 1, plus 1 counter on it, and we can pay 4 to put a counter on something. Oran Reef Hydra gets pretty crazy. <clears throat> um, it's a 5-5 five, five for 6 with Trample. When land comes into play under our control, we put a counter on it. If it was a forest, we put 2. So we do have a lot of forests. Uh, but even if it's just a, any other land, it's still pretty sweet. Ivory Dusk Fortress is just unfair. It's a 5-7 five, for 5, which is already sweet, even though it's 3 colors. And we untap each of our creatures that have a plus one, plus one counter on it during each other player's untap step. So that's just insane. Underrated card for sure. Uh, Sea Trino. 4-5 for 4 with Trample. It was a, the bane of standard. When it comes into play, each opponent loses 3 life and you gain 3 life. So more impactful in Commander. Like 3 life isn't a big deal. But you're hitting three people with that. <clears throat> Drostani is the main life gain part of the deck. Whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control, you gain life equal to its toughness. And we can pay three to populate. Pay three to tap it to populate. So we put a token onto the battlefield as a copy of a creature you control. So, a copy of a creature token. So, best thing is to take the Celestia land that makes the 8-8 token and populate that, <laughs> gaining life. That's, uh, that's the 
dream, but really anything is good. Even if it's just a 1 1 token, it's still nice. Uh, and she's at 2 5 for 4. Uh, very good card. We have Warden of the First Tree, which is sort of a level up card. It's a 1 1 for 1. But the first level for 2 mana, it becomes a 3 3. For 4 mana, after that, it turns into. Or it also gains Trample and Lifelink. Now, on top of that, if you spend f 6, uh, you put 5 plus 1 plus 1 counters on it. So, good card that gets better the longer the game goes. Isan the Wanderer Bard is a 2 3 for 3. We can pay 3 and tap it to put a first counter on it. And then we search our library for a creature card with converted mana cost equal to the number of first counters and put it on the battlefield. Which, the fact that that says put it on the battlefield is awesome. Obviously, eventually that will stop working because uh, you can't take counters off. But we have cards that cost six. I don't think we have anything more. I think six is our highest, but still, that lets us do it six times. So that's six basically free, or, well, six creatures that basically cost three mana, which will average out nicely over time. But we don't have much card draw, so having this on the battlefield is nice. Uh, speaking of card draw, this is... Ops on Beastmaster, and uh, it lets us draw a card if, at the beginning of our upkeep, we have the creature with the greatest toughness, or tied for the greatest toughness, which, considering the fact that we're putting so many plus one plus one counters on things, is not unreasonable. Otherwise, it's a two, one, or three, which sucks, but the effect is nice. Karametra's Acolyte is a one, four that taps for green equal to our devotion to green. Um, so it's fine. A lot of our cards are green. A lot of them are white, too, but I think it's decently split with green. For Planeswalkers, we have two. Um, the Nissa from Oath of the Gatewatch was in this deck, <coughs> but I took her out to put her in my standard deck. Uh, otherwise she'd be in here. When she goes out of standard, I'll probably put her back, but that's gonna be a while. Or if I come across another one. So Soren is a four loyalty planeswalker for four. He's white and black. His plus one is until your next turn, creatures you control get plus one and gain lifelink. So more of the life gain part. His minus two is we get a two two black vampire token with flying. I never really used that one. And his minus six is you get an emblem with at the beginning of each opponent's upkeep. Uh that player sacrifices a creature. So, gets rid of your opponent's creatures turn by turn. <coughs> Frask of the Unseen is one of our surprise win conditions. So, five loyalty planeswalker for five. Her plus one is until your next turn. Whenever a creature deals combat damage to Frasca, destroy that creature. So, basically, it gives your planeswalker death touch. Minus three. Just destroy target, not land permanent. So it's also removal. Her minus seven is we put three one one black assassin tokens on the battlefield, and when they deal combat damage to a player, that player loses the game. So if we can attack our opponent with those, or if we can attack all three of our opponents with those on our turn, then we. I'm sorry. Then we win. It's nice that there's three of them. Works nice for Commander. Ondor Instance and Sorceries. Murderous Cut costs five. We can delve and we destroy a target creature. Just some nice removal. The Solidarity of Heroes costs two and costs the same amount for each target beyond the first. And we can double the number of plus one plus one counters on our target creatures, which can go crazy. Dravoka's Command costs a green and a white choose two of the following four. We can prevent all damage target instant or sorcery would deal this turn if we're against burn or something. Uh, target player sacrifices an enchantment. Maybe there's something good out. Put a plus one plus one counter on target creature and target creature you control fights target creature you don't control. So various so enchantment and creature removal and some other protection. Predator's Rapport Choose target creature you control. You gain life equal to its power plus its toughness. Again, this
this 8-8 token. That's 16 life off of a 3-mana card. So, with this deck, this cheap, this little common card goes crazy. Obzon Charm costs one of each of the Obzon colors. We can exile a creature with power 3 or greater, draw 2 cards and lose 2 life, or distribute 2 plus 1 plus 1 counters among 1 or 2 creatures. All of these are great for this deck. Uh, we don't have a ton of removal, so the removal is nice. The card draw is nice because we don't have much card draw, and of course the counters are good. Sorry guys, my stomach is growling. It's about almost dinner time here. Winds of Calcisma is a 2 mana fog, basically. But if we have a creature with power 4 or greater, which we usually do, then we just prevent combat damage from our opponent's creatures and not ours. We have Ready and Willing, which is a split fuse card. Uh, Ready is 3 mana. Creatures you control are indestructible. Untap them. And Willing is also 3. Creatures you control gain death touch and lifelink. So I'm good all around. Giving them indestructible pseudo-vigilance. Lifelink and Death Touch is pretty sweet for 6 mana. Dude Blast, 7 mana, choose up to 1 creature, destroy the rest. We do have a lot of creatures, but if our opponent has a lot of better creatures, then this is nice. Dawn Glow Infusion is another one of our great life gain spells. For only a lot of mana, you gain X life if green was spent to play it, and X life if white was spent to play it. So basically, it's X, gain X times 2 life, which is pretty sweet, you know, because, yeah, our deck has all those colors. Profane Command is X and 2 black. We can choose 2. Target player loses X life. Return target creature with converted mana cost X or less to the battlefield from the graveyard. Target creature gets minus X, minus X till end of turn or up to X target creatures gain fear until end of turn. So it can't be blocked by artifacts, or blocked except by artifacts or black creatures. Kintree Invocation is two mana for a sorcery. We put an XX black and green spirit warrior creature token on the battlefield, where X is the greatest toughness among creatures you control. And of course all of our creatures get huge. Increasing Savagery is 4 mana to put 5 plus 1 plus 1 counters on, some, on something. We can flashback it for 7 and put 10 counters on something. Primal Command. As you can see, we have a lot of commands and charms and stuff. Uh, since this deck is pretty straightforward in what it does, we like to have cards to have as many options as possible. So for 5 mana, we get to choose 2 of these 4. Target player gains 7 life. Put target non-creature permanent on top of its owner's library. Target player shuffles his or her graveyard into his or her library. Or search your library for a creature, reveal it, put it into your hand. So all these and things for different situations. Onto our enchantments. Gleam of Authority is two mana for an aura enchant creature. The creature gets plus one plus one for each plus one plus one counter on other creatures. Notice it doesn't say creatures with plus one plus one counters, it says total number of plus one plus one counters on other creatures. That can go crazy. And the enchanted creature has vigilance and the ability to pay one and tap it to bolster one. So basically outlast. <clears throat> Ooze Flux, a four mana enchantment. We can pay two to remove plus one plus one counters from our creatures and put an XX Ooze Creature token on the battlefield, equal to the counters removed. Retreat to Kazandu uh, has landfall. Whenever a land comes into play under our control, we can put a plus one plus one counter on something, or gain two life. Both are good for us. The counter, or the, yeah, the counter's probably what we want to do. Murder Investigation is an aura. Enchant creature you control uh, for two mana. When that creature dies, we get X-1-1 one, one soldier tokens, where X is that creature's power. Again, with all the counters, that can get big. In order to keep that big bigness, uh, this enchantment says whenever a creature we control dies, we put X plus one plus one counters on target creature, where X is the power of the creature that died. 
So basically, as long as we always have another creature out when something dies, or just shuffling its power onto something else. So that is pretty sweet. Sight of the Scale Lords is five mana for an enchantment, and it makes all of our big things bigger. At the beginning of combat on your turn, creatures you control with toughness four or greater, which is like everything eventually, gets plus two, plus two in Vigilance. Yeah, I don't need to explain that one. Uh, Obs on Ascendancy, one of each Obs on color. When it enters, we put a plus one, plus one counter on each creature we control. And whenever a non-token creature we control dies, we get a 1-1 one, one spirit token with flying. Retribution of the Ancients is a 1-mana enchantment. It's a 1-black, and for 1-black, we can remove X counters from among creatures we control to give something minus X minus X. So it's a removal option that's always there. <coughs> Citadel Siege is an enchantment for 4-mana. Choose cons or dragons. Dragons is at the beginning of combat on each opponent's turn, tap target creature that player controls. Generally, we're not choosing that, we're going to choose cons, which is at the beginning of combat on your turn, put two plus one plus one counters on target creature we control. And our very last card is Frontier Siege, another siege card. We're again going to be choosing cons which is at the beginning of each of your main phases, add two green to your mana pool. This deck is relatively mana hungry, and it probably doesn't have as many land as you should have. So this helps us ramp a little bit, starting turn four. But yeah, dragons, whenever a creature that fly and enters the battlefield, you have a fight target creature you don't control. We have like three or four things of flying, so it doesn't really matter. So guys, thank you for watching. I hope you found this relaxing and informative. Tell me what you think of my commander deck, cards I should take out or put in. I like this deck. It doesn't always work, but when it does work, it goes absolutely insane. And it's just crazy. So 